Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Hallelujah! Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ has risen indeed! Alleluia! Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
for Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Isaiah 25, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Word of life, word of hope. Thanks be to God. to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him 
receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of life, word of hope. Thanks be to God. of the tomb. When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look. There is the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out, and they fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Word of hope, word of life. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Finally, we get to say these words after what's been a long and difficult year in so many different ways. And then our Lenten journey throughout these 40 days, taking an intentional deep look within ourselves, being as honest as we can, going into those cracks and crevices, those places that are hidden and even those places that are just fully exposed and being honest about our brokenness and the ways in which we've fallen short and being the people of God and who God calls us to be. Um, what we call sin in the church. Um, two definitions, one basic one being missing the mark. Sin is missing the mark of who we're called to be. And another way that it's been described as is being turned inward on self, self being that thing where the focus is all me, where we go back to this place of a sense of us being in charge and in command and control of everything, being our own God or making idols of other things and turning them into gods that we think will best suit us, at least the individual. And so we've journeyed in this time, and it's been interesting that on the wall next to the altar throughout the Lenten season has been our banner that says, Return to the Lord. And while the season is one of repentance after that deep reflection, it's the very place that we return to God, where we turn to that place where once again God says to us, just as God did in the beginning of the scriptures, in the story of Genesis and the creation of the world and Adam and Eve, that you can trust me that I love you in spite of your brokenness, in the ways in which you fall short, as your hearts are lifted in repentance and returning to me, I forgive you. I love you. You can trust me that I will always love you. And so Easter celebrates that reality in its fullest that we once again hear God's promise that we can trust God. That in the midst of the ugliness of Good Friday where the fullness of the worst of humanity is there. That when love poured itself out in flesh and blood, when love poured itself out in its purest form, we didn't like it, we didn't want it, and we killed it. We killed it, but God kept God's promise. Just as Jesus said, I will go, I'll be crucified, but in three days I'll rise again, and God keeps his promises. And so on this day we celebrate that Christ is alive, 
the resurrection has come for us and for all people, for all of creation. And that's an important piece to remember. It's for all of creation. In Pastor Carl's class this last several weeks, on Wednesday nights, we've been looking at the atonement theories that are out there. And we came to that place of understanding the heart of the atonement is in the word. Um, make one. And literally, atone is to make one. Or you can think of it as to make one with. God is making us one with God, is restoring that relationship that gets broken apart and are missing the mark in our shortcomings on so many levels. But it's not only... Um, this gift of God making us one in relationship with God, but by making us one in relationship with God through Christ, we're made one in connection with all of humanity, all our fellow brothers and sisters across the globe. And we begin to see that connection and not only with that, but with the whole of creation. And Jesus had laid out for us on Monday, Thursday, what we're called to do and be as the resurrected people of God living as a resurrected people of God, that we're to love one another as Christ loved us. And you know, I've got to say, um, I've seen the transforming power of the resurrection in so many ways. I think it's in ways sometimes that we, that we don't think of. We often think of resurrection just as some gift that's in the future for eternal life. And certainly this day we proclaim that God holds us and seeks to give us the fullness of life through Christ's death and resurrection, both in the future and holding us through eternity in life, but in the here and now. As we see the power of the resurrection transforming people's lives, sometimes not even realizing it, if we but look and see. You know, in the midst of this pandemic, I have always had deep respect and appreciation for our healthcare workers. Probably so much of that comes from so many of the things I've seen, but then with personal conversation with friends of mine who are nurses and doctors, who have been on the front lines, who've shared their stories, the tears that have been shed, literally being the surrogates, holding the hand of a loved one while holding up the cell phone so family can say their last goodbyes. But it even hit in a more powerful way a couple weeks ago when I got knocked down by this first shot and it kept going longer than expected. And one of the doctors said, maybe you should go in and just get a COVID test to make sure that right before the you got the shot, you didn't contract COVID. And as I walked into that little 10 by 10 room, I immediately, when I saw the nurse and the doctor covered in their uh, PPP gear or their protection gear um, that they had on, and I immediately looked and this feeling came over me and I was worried and I quickly prayed, God, please, if I do have COVID, do not let these people catch this. Here they were taking a risk, a risk with their very life to offer me life. If it should come that that's what I'd come down with, to let me know that it was there and then to be cared for by others um, who again, day after day are risking their lives for other human beings. It's the power of the resurrection. It's this gift of life where love is poured out, where we're willing to risk for the other. I've seen it in so many ways. This last year when things hit, I mean, the food banks stayed open. They found a way. They got volunteers. Many of you have helped out with that. The, the programs with the kids and the schools and the backpacks and helping kids continue to learn in the midst of this whole new way of having to do things that is far from ideal. The love and care and concern that I saw of people bringing meals to their loved ones and leaving them out on the front porch. The cards, the phone calls, the power, the transforming power of the resurrection of God making us one with him in Christ and making us one with one another is being poured out in so many beautiful ways. And so it's important that we proclaim Christ is risen, alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Now we look back to the story in our gospel reading and we find those first women at the tomb and they find it empty and their lives once again are thrown into chaos, into uncertainty. They don't know what's going on. They had had great hopes for Jesus and then he's killed and now the hopelessness that is there, but they still showed up in love to prepare his body and to bring spices and care for Jesus. And then they show up and here instead of Jesus is some guy dressed in a white robe who says, he's not here, he's been raised. Look, 
Now go, go tell Peter and his disciples that he goes ahead and will meet them in Galilee, just like he said he would. Again, that God can be trusted, that Jesus would keep his promise and see the disciples in the fullness of his glory, resurrected by God. But the women were seized with terror and amazed. And they went and they fled from the tomb and they said no one, nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Fear seemed to get a hold of them. And in the oldest manuscripts of Mark's gospel, that's where the story ends. That they went out and they were told no one, for they were afraid. And then some of you, if you look in your Bibles, you might be saying, well, wait a minute, but the verses continue on through the end. There's more there. But you might notice a little asterisk and note where it points out that that later manuscripts on this, later authoritative texts, added added those pieces to the stories. We also see it in the other Gospels, that while the women were afraid and seized in their fear, apparently they eventually did proclaim, Alleluia, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed and told the disciples, and told others, and they went and proclaimed the word. And so that's why we're here, proclaiming the gift of the resurrection, that we can say with boldness, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. And we have, we have continued to proclaim that throughout this last year, at a time when I heard some people, when they asked us for the protection and care of one another, please don't gather inside in large groups saying, oh, they're trying to prevent us from being the church. The church never stopped being the church. We found new ways, ways that for some of us in some mainline congregations had been dragging our feet for a long time, ways to use technology to continue. And we never stopped. We never stopped coming together as a church. It just happened in new and different ways. And because of it, because of never stopping proclaiming hallelujah, Christ is risen, more people, we found out, ended up getting to hear the good news of God's love. Some who have never heard it before and others who had heard it, but life and whatever it was, things that had come up had not been paying attention to it like they had before. And now the resurrection comes in and there's been this transformation and renewal of their hearts and souls. So when we read the story and it says the women went and told no one because they were afraid, was that it, the end? No, it didn't end there. The power of the resurrection stirred these women and eventually they told and they shared. And so now for us, as we move on from this Easter Sunday, as we move on to things continuing to evolve and move towards a future that we're still not 100% sure what it looks like, but boy, there's light at the end of the tunnel and it's getting brighter and brighter. How will we continue to proclaim, Alleluia, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. May we have eyes that see and ears that hear, mouths that are open to speak and hearts filled with the love of God that proclaim God's love. That as Jesus asked us, love one another as I have loved you, we in the transforming power of the resurrection made one with God and one another will desire nothing but to find new inventive ways to recapture some of the ways that we've been involved before in proclaiming not just for a few, but for the whole of creation. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Happy Easter, everyone.
alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. We give thanks for the birth of Samuel Frederick to Martin and Elizabeth Paul last week. Fill all in need with hope those who are afraid or confused, those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying and those who grieve, especially those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts at this time. Assure them of your promises. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection Fill this community of faith with joy as we are called your beloved in baptism. Multiply that joy so that we share it at home, at work, and in our community. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Receive with thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the green day rises from the belly graves. We need that in darkness, many days as late. Love lives again, that with the dead has been. Love is come again, like weed arising
May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. And may Almighty God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Greetings for our Easter announcements near the deck. Just some brief announcements today. Uh, blessings on your Easter. I hope you have a wonderful Easter celebration as you carry that in to the week ahead of you and throughout this Easter season as we celebrate that we are God's Easter people, a people of the resurrection. Wanted to let you know that next Sunday, um, the Senate has put together our, an online service for us that we're going to use as the online service. It provides some wonderful music um, through different churches throughout the Senate. Ours is one of them that's on there. So thank you um, to, to Mary for offering that out. And there's a big choir piece that's, that's in there as well. Um, and I believe Mary uh, Munson was also um, involved in, in that. You can see her um, as part of it, but they have people from all over the Senate. So it's a wonderful, beautiful service. Hope you enjoy that next week, and we'll continue with the, the drive-in. Um, council did meet and get together. They're going to be gathering folks together here in a, a week or two um, to get volunteers together as we are tentatively, hear the word tentatively, um, we'll get some definite on this, looking at May 2nd as a possible date to move back towards indoor worship for those who are comfortable enough um, to do so. If not, you continue worshiping with the online worship that we will continue to provide. Things will look different. We'll say more about that in the coming week, give you kind of a picture because we still have to maintain social distancing within the seating spaces. So there'll be some registration processes and other pieces that we will go over. But just wanted to give you um, uh, a heads up on that so you know. Uh, with that, we'll take a couple weeks off from our Wednesday night study and then we'll pick back up again and I'll give you more information on that next week um, in the announcement time or the next time we have our announcements. So God's peace and blessings on the rest of your day and the rest of your week. Happy, happy Easter. And remember, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia.